Did you know there was a Castlevania arcade game? It's horrible. Daniel has asked you if you want to see me again. And he's viciously locked me away in my crypt. <sighs> oh, how I long for freedom. And to taste the supple flesh of the innocent. But would you? Would you free me, dear viewer? Will you free me from my torture and torment? Would you liberate me and allow me to feast on your flesh and drink of your blood? As we explore the video vivisections of yesteryear, the sinister stages, the perverse platforming, the rotten road, Play. It is up to you. You must speak the incantation in the comments and I will rise, yes. I will rise from my crypt and take my rightful place on the throne of the damned. And tell you all there is to know about this spooky, scary, skeletal, the perverse, the wretched. Yes, if you want to know the greatest secrets of the darkest corners of classic gaming, speak the incantation in the comments and I will rise. But if you do not, if you suppress, if you push me down far into the crypt, then I shall damn and curse you forever. Whoa, I am. I am really, really sorry about that. I don't know how he got here. He shouldn't be able to do that. I sealed him away. But look, it's up to you. If you want to let that maniac back out here again, all you got to do is tell, tell me in the comments. And that's going to bring him back to life. Or back... Out. I don't know, but he'll be, he'll be, he'll come back. This is, but don't, because that guy is fucked up. We're this month, we're taking a close look at the Castlevania franchise. If you haven't seen my Vampire Killer video yet, please be sure to check that out after you've watched this video, and don't forget to come back next week for Castlevania Chronicles and. Akumajo Dracula for the Sharp X68K Japanese Home Computer. Most retro gamers probably know about this by now, but I was really surprised back in the day when I found out about Haunted Castle, an arcade game by Konami that's based on the Castlevania series. In Japan, it even shared the same title of the console game, Akumajo Dracula. Clearly non canon. Haunted Castle has Simon fight through six action-packed levels to rescue his wife, Serena. I suppose we could guess that this takes place after Simon's quest, but it's not officially in the Castlevania timeline. I don't know. It's a little tongue-in-cheek. The opening cinematic has a very Conan-like Simon wearing a tuxedo as his wife is abducted. I've seen this referred to as a parody of Castlevania. I don't think that was the intention here. I think it was meant to be taken fully seriously, as goofy as that opening scene may be. Because that's the only goofiness really in the game, apart from the game being just generally shitty. Haunted Castle maintains the action platformer roots of the Castlevania series, but it's way less focused on tricky jumping and a lot more on the fighting. Simon's not limited to just his whip here, and the vampire killer is replaced by a short-range flail, more like a real historical morning star. 
His most powerful weapon, however, is a sword that looks to be modeled after your standard, you know, medieval cruciform arming sword. These upgrades are really few and far between, however. You're not going to get upgraded to the sword in every level. The sub-weapons have been changed, too. Simon can wield a bomb, a boomerang, and a torch, in addition to the classic cross and pocket watch. But a lot of these weapons work very differently from what we're used to. The torch acts like the holy water. The pocket watch does what the pocket watch did. And the cross kind of throws a few little projectiles forward, and you can keep on spamming it to throw more. Uh, but if there are four projectiles on the screen, you just do a melee attack with the cross, which is kind of weird and cool. The bomb is like the holy water, but it doesn't track anywhere. The boomerang, you throw it, it comes back, you know, like a boomerang. So that's basically really simple stuff. All weapons in this game do persist through death which is kind of a cool thing, but you only get to die three times in the game. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. The gameplay in this one always felt kind of slow and plotting to me. Simon looks like he's moving through pudding. It definitely feels a lot slower than the console games, but it's still very playable. You'll die really fast if you play the main US version of the game. That cabinet is definitely hungry for your quarters. There are plenty of environmental hazards that do massive amounts of damage. Look at the bricks that fly out of the wall at you. If you don't get the timing right, you're dead in two hits, and they're incredibly difficult to dodge. Although it looks like you can destroy them with your weapon. There's an alternate version which has the same difficulty as the Europe and Japan versions, much more forgiving and a lot more enjoyable to play. I recommend either, either be Japanese version or version K if you want to play this on main. Although I do challenge you to beat the first level on the M version without cheating. Let me know in the comments if you can do it. Dip switches for this cabinet include coins per credit, cabinet type, game difficulty, Simon strength, demo sounds, flip screen, upright controls, service mode, and allow continue. But even with continue enabled, you only get three continues with one life per credit. If this is disabled, you get no continues at all. You get one life and that's it. Haunted Castle isn't big on mercy either. You'll have to start at a checkpoint after continuing instead of staying in place like most arcade games. You can insert a coin and press the start button to add to your life meter, but this costs a continue and it won't help you if you fall into a pit. On the other hand, there's very little knockback here, so getting hit generally does not send you careening into the abyss. The strength setting is interesting in that it directly affects how much damage enemies and hazards do to Simon. The stronger you make Simon, the less damage he takes. There are no candles to whip here, instead hearts and items drop from specific enemies in each level. Hearts are scarce at the best of times, so you'll want to collect every single one you see if you want to have a chance at winning. Bosses do not have an on-screen health meter, so you won't know how close you are to defeating the boss until that boss is defeated, but most of them do die pretty quickly. You'll remember Medusa and Frankenstein's monster, and of course Dracula here, but there are some unusual monsters too, like this uh, golem at the end of level 5. There is a two-player mode, but it's alternating, so if you want to play with a friend you can do that, but there's no simultaneous play, you've got to take turns. Graphics-wise, the sprites are very large, much more so than any other console game in the series, which is very nice, and the animation does look pretty smooth. The color palette's a little bit drab, but there are some cool effects like the blood on the zombies. Still, this does look a lot nicer than the NES and MSX Castlevania games that were out at the time, so even though it's not great by 16-bit standards, it's pretty amazing by 8-bit standards. Weather effects like rain and fog are kind of hit and miss. Some of them look nice, but others just look like garbage data cluttering up the screen. The music is okay. I mean, it is Castlevania music, which is great, but it just doesn't sound that good. Uh, but it sounds okay. There's nothing really to write home about. Take a listen for yourself and let me know what you think.
Kumajo Drakura was released to Japan in arcades in February of 1988, and it came to Europe and the US in November of that same year. It was not a very successful title. Players disliked the game's unfair difficulty level, the limited number of continues, and the poor hit and jump detection. Unlike a lot of other arcade games of its time that present the player with challenge that can be overcome just by inserting more coins, Haunted Castle makes the fatal mistake of presenting the player with a challenge that is fundamentally unfair. One thing I've learned while playing retro games is that when they make the game challenging in a way that's not fair to the player, it doesn't make it more compelling to play, it makes it less compelling. Challenge is fantastic as long as it's a challenge that can be overcome, but when the challenge is cheap or unfair, players are going to turn away and play something else. Outside of Japan, Haunted Castle was not marketed as part of the Castlevania series. This is most likely because it was not originally intended to be a Castlevania game. The original project was a new fantasy action game, but this was changed when development was not going well. Additional staff members were added to the project. At the time, they were working on the game Hot Chase, one of whom is Masaki Kukino who informed interviewers that during the development of this game, much time was spent on debugging. This means that the game wasn't really finished and new features, levels, and characters couldn't really be added. Ultimately, it was decided to change the game into a Castlevania game. This was most likely in order to use the success of the franchise to save the game. A lot of gameplay elements, like jump and hit detection, are still pretty broken, and you can jump directly onto something and still fall through it. You can hit an enemy and not kill them, and an enemy can not hit you and still do damage. The soundtrack was written by Kenichi Matsubara, who also worked on Simon's Quest. So luckily, Bloody Tears is part of the soundtrack. The rest of the soundtrack is pretty forgettable. Haunted Castle is built on the Konami Contra-based hardware. Now, throughout the 80s and 90s, Konami introduced multiple hardware variations that were named after specific titles for which they were initially built. The base configuration is used for other games with some changes depending on the needs of a given title. This hardware configuration was used in Contra, Combat School, Fast Lane, and a few other Konami titles. What they all have in common is the Konami 007-121 video chip, of which Haunted Castle and many others use too. This does explain the advanced graphics as it is a 16-bit video chip and with two of them much larger and more detailed sprites could be displayed on screen. Haunted Castle uses a 052001 CPU, which is a 16-bit CPU but there's just not that much info about this particular processor available online. If you know more about it, please let me know in the comments. The cabinet also uses a standard array of various Yamaha audio chips, but I don't really have a lot of detail about them. So if you know more about the audio that was used in this machine, please let me know in the comments. Castlevania is a fantastic series, and probably one of the greatest and most iconic video game series of all time. But Haunted Castle is not a good game. It's fun to play once just to experience it, but the broken gameplay and just overall sloppiness the unreasonable difficulty, it makes it at best a one-time play. I wouldn't recommend going out of your way to play it. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment to help this channel grow so I can make better and bigger and cooler and funnier videos for you. Please join me again next week when we cover my favorite hidden gem of the Castlevania series, Akumajo Durakura for the Shop X68000. PasoCon. That's gonna be cool. And don't let that BitKeeper guy out. He's fucked up. <laughs>